guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. Get that out of the way. Um, so this video, we're going to be getting the cam chest buttoned up. Um, the timing done, which is a big thing I've been concerned about, but as you'll see, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, and then, of course, getting the cover on, the new ARP hardware installed, and all that. So I try to give good explanations of what I'm doing in this video because I had to um, turn the engine over to get the timing lined up. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Uh, but if you guys have any other questions, as always, comments are the best place to do that. There's a lot of footage I actually cut out of this because I thought it may have been irrelevant. Um, just a lot of me kind of talking to myself and talking through some stuff. But um, I think I put all the good stuff in the video. So yeah, enjoy the video. Um, this is, again, one of the more fun videos I've made just because this is the, bulk, the bulk of the project was the, of course, the big board and then the cam chest. So this is finally getting knocked out and then more stuff coming. You'll see at the outro, there's a lot of stuff coming up. So enjoy the video. Okay, now it's time for the fun part. The um, drive gear and chain. Um, I have the chain separated right now because I'm going to try to line up these timing marks. Um, the crankshaft timing mark is a little bit off. So what I'm going to have to do is jack the bike up, rotate the back tire. Um, the bike's still in fifth gear. And I'm going to get this to spin so it's perfectly in line with this timing mark onto the rear camshaft sprocket. So that should be pretty easy. And then once these are lined up, I'm going to pop both of these off, put the chain on, put them back on. And I have two new bolts. It says in the manual to get new bolts anyway. And I have two new bolts on that I have came with my gasket kit. And it says to put thread locker on the rear sprocket, the rear cam sprocket, but do not put thread locker on this one. No thread locker, thread locker. No thread locker, thread locker. Okay. Yeah, there's the crank timing mark and there's the cam sprocket timing mark. So I had the heads on and I had the spark plugs in and the valves weren't open because there's no push rods or anything. So it was getting stuck. So I took the spark plugs out to relieve the compression. But that's good. That means the compression in this thing's good. So there we go. Spin, 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 spin. I would say that is pretty damn close if you ask me. There is kind of a an index marker on this camp. Actually, you can see it really good on the camera. That gray line right there, I don't know if that's the purpose of that line, but it actually lines these up really well. So I'm gonna go off that. Okay, so these are gonna come back off. I won't lose the timing because there are index marks on the cam and on the crank. So they are good now. This is a spacer that goes on to the rear cam. Now in the manual, it says to put the manufacturer's mark on here it says INA317. Um, probably not gonna be able to see that. Oh yeah, there you go. They say to put that in. So that's gonna go in. Of course, the sprocket's gonna go on over it. There we go. So just to recap, cam, timing marks facing in at each other. These timing marks facing at each other along this line, kind of at like a, I don't even know what they'd be, like a 30 degree angle maybe. And in this kit from Fueling Parts, this is the new two new bolts. There's a thick washer and a thin washer. The thick washer goes onto the cam, the thin washer goes onto the crank. And now these being ARP bolts, it came with ARP lube which I'm only going to put on the underside of the nut, or the, the head. And I am going to put thread locker on the actual threads of this one. Not this one. This one. No thread locker. Thread locker. No? Yes. Yes, no. This is the bolt with the thread locker for the rear cam sprocket. I have the ARP fastener lube on the bottom of this, and then the thread locker. Probably can't. You can see a little bit. So that's going to go in. The crank bolt does not use thread locker. I don't know if I've said that or not. And then so a little bit of ARP lube on the um, flat side of the nut. 
like so. Okay, so from here, these are just finger tight. Now we're gonna take the chain tensioner um, lock out here, my little Allen wrench, and we're gonna slowly let this rest onto the chain. And this, what it says to do in here is flathead screwdriver, take the tension off, take the lock out, and then just like that. Again, don't let it slam because it'll damage the shoe. And now we're going to torque these down. First step is 15 foot pounds. And then this one goes all the way to 34 foot pounds. And this one is at 24 foot pounds. And again, I don't have the little tool for this, so I'm going to use um, this little step tool that I had for my um, chain install. But I'm going to wedge in here again. It worked last time, so I'm sure it'll work this time. So they're both at 15. So now the top one is gonna go to 34. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do 24 on both just to kind of step this one up. Okay, 34, 24, thread locker, no thread locker, and timing chains. The timing marks are still good. That should complete the cam chest as a whole, other than obviously the actual cam cover, which is going to be stupid easy. It's just new gasket, copper spray it, uh, and then crisscross pattern. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get this cam chest buttoned up with the cam cover. Um, I got a new gasket. It came in my fueling uh, cam chest rebuild kit. I also got new ARP hardware from IMZZ Elite. So I'm going to spray this gasket. It's a directional gasket. There's no really no way to fuck that up. I'm going to spray this gasket with the uh, copper spray. Slap it on. Put the cover on. Torque it all down. Let me check the torque specs real quick. Cam shift. So 90 to 120 again. So that's 90 to 120 inch pound in a crisscross pattern. There is no torque sequence for this either. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. It's gonna be real quick, real, real nitty gritty. Cam chest buttoned up. We're good to go on that. Next up. I'm glad to get this done though. This was kind of something I was dreading doing. Um, but it's out of the way. It's good to go. Timing's good. All right, so that's gonna do it for the cam chest and the bulk of this engine rebuild. Um, the next video, or I guess couple of videos is gonna be the rest of the valve train um, to include new lifters, new push rods, the whole breather box to include the rocker arms, new breathers, getting the push rod covers in place with a nice little trick for that as well. And then getting the rest of the engine buttoned up, rejetting the carb, and then hopefully starting this thing shortly thereafter. There are a couple new things that I've recently just got in that are last minute additions to this Dyna build. Um, that's gonna be new brakes. Um, all stainless steel braided brake lines, um, a recluse torque drive clutch that I'm super excited about. Of course, I'm going to go over detailed installations of those as well. I still have to go over the bodywork, which is only going to be a couple of videos because it's 99% sanding. So as always, thanks for watching, um, getting some good feedback again on the channel, some comments, uh, messages on Instagram and whatnot. 
big things coming. Hopefully in a couple weeks this, this engine will be started. You can hear it run. I'm trying to edit up a, a video or a channel trailer just for the hell of it basically. So if you have any feedback or any suggestions on that, I'm trying to put together like a three, four minute trailer of uh, what this channel is going to be about. Again, still a new channel. I'm still trying to build build the channel up and get you know more, I guess, professional looking. So again, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support.